two words that may or may not change your life, letting go, which also happens to be the title of my favorite book, self-improvement book by David Hawkins called uh, Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender. <laughs> I found this book when I was going through a really tough breakup and uh, I was constantly watching videos about how to move on, how to let go. And so I stumbled upon a guy talking about this book and to say that it changed my life is an understatement. So without further ado, I wanted to share some of the highlights, some of the things that I really love about this book, uh, which literally changed my life upside down in a good way. <laughs> First idea is you have to prioritize feelings over thoughts. David Hawkins states that uh, thoughts in and of themselves are painless. It is the hidden emotion which lies beneath the thought which could A, uh, cause the thought in general and B, uh, could harm us. Good news that the lifespan of an emotion is only a couple of seconds and so it's our choice to let it consume our life or just choose to move on to a higher vibration. It represents different levels of emotions which according to Hawkins calibrate at different frequencies. So the more negative emotions are at the lowest scale uh, which calibrate in the lowest frequencies whilst the higher emotions are the most peaceful and happier one our job is not to overwhelm other people with our feelings our thoughts but actually just take accountability and neutralize them which basically means being aware of your emotion staying with it constantly trying to absorb it and letting it go uh, therefore moving on to a higher vibrational emotion. Another thing that resonates with me is finding a polar opposite of your emotion, as I like to call it, uh, finding a better twin. For example, when I'm scared to do something, so I'm experiencing fear, I look at the scale and look at the opposite emotion of fear, which is courage. So I change the meaning of I can't do something to I can and I'm brave to do so. Once I pinpoint that, I begin to let go of the negative emotion and try to lead with the positive one. Other people are not an extension of me. As I mentioned earlier, I went to a really rough breakup once where I kind of saw my identity through his. I would envision my future for his, uh, my thoughts and emotion. And so when it all ended, I felt like I kind of lost a part of myself. I was so attached to the person, so he literally became uh, an extension of me. David Hawkins states that attachment creates dependency and, and in and of itself carries a fear of loss. He described it as having a child and an adult within you. The child thinks that his life will be over when a pet dies, whereas the adult uh, feels grief, but he's able to accept the impermanence of life and he will move on from it. Honestly, as I acknowledged my attachment, I realized how selfish I was, which in a way is natural, we're all egoic species, but, but it becomes unhealthy when you base your happiness on other people. To combat that, David Hawkins should suggests to realize the hidden purpose uh, the other p person plays in our life. What emotional need is being fulfilled? What emotions would arise were I to lose it. Also returning to my first idea is that feelings stick around only if we truly believe that they serve some kind of purpose within them. All negative emotions stem from fear. Yes, it's exactly that. All negative emotions have some kind of fear underneath them. So if you track them all back, uh, there is always a hidden fear that lies at the root of all the emotions. So honestly, let yourself fear that fear because it's more tolerable than depression, for example, if we go back to the uh, scale of consciousness, the map of consciousness. I think it's always beneficial to remember that no matter how scary that emotion or feeling is, at the end of the day, it's just an emotion. Everyone feels scared. The author, for example, uses uh, the 
fear of public speaking. Almost all public speakers or celebrities know that if you go on stage and share how vulnerable you feel and how scary you feel uh, about giving that important speech, everyone will just feel for you and kind of like be less uncomfortable about it. People laugh and feel uh, more respect for the person who acknowledged their fear and shares it with the world. <laughs> Stop! Because at the so, because at the end of the day, no one is unique. Everyone has the same fears, the same insecurities, the same emotions. We're all human. Everyone secretly fears about being dumb, being less beautiful, being uh, stupid, looking stupid. It's natural and it's our human nature. Which brings me to the next idea of uh, this book. View your ego as a cute little teddy bear. Our ego is not polite. It thinks in gross uh, concepts. Like the author skillfully states, our consciousness went to preschool while our ego stayed in the jungle. It wants drama, it wants violence, it wants gossip. That is why TV and programs uh, that are based on gossip are so entertaining because our ego deeply inside uh, wants that and it's uh, fun for us to watch other people talk about other people and just gossip. If we're willing to view those ego egoic fantasies as the fantasies of our ego, then it is so much easier for us to let go of them. It also helps to view our ego uh, in a funny little way so the author suggests looking at it as a fun little cute teddy bear it's limited it's not bad when i understand that this is my ego coming out out i just ask myself do i really want to feed that part of myself do i really want to feed into that fear do i really want to feed into that small little part of me or do i have a choice to think differently and fuel something bigger inside of me. Next up, deglamorizing your life. This is closely linked with your desire, with the glamour of life, of always wanting something more, of uh, feeling that uh, there is never enough, that I must have, therefore I do not have, I lack. David Hawkins states that if we're in a state of feeling of desiring something, we are no longer free because we're attached to getting something that we lack and we do not have. That's why we are hooked to the feeling of trying to have it and fearing that we might not get it. This had happened to me so many times when I was dancing professionally. I would want to prove my worth to my trainers, to my choreographers. I would literally just jump out of my skin to prove my worth out of the fear of not achieving something and not being my best at something in a show or whatever. And by that, I just led myself to burn out, to not actually wanting to do something, anything in dance. This pressure I was putting on myself, on my dream, to have something worth it, to be something worth it, is what actually led uh, me to burn out, essentially. Also, when the author says about uh, deglamorization of our life, he talks about uh, romantization of some things. So, for example, if you're going on a date, your first date, imagine, uh, you have this certain expectation and romantization of the whole thing. So, you anticipate to have your partner uh, do certain things to uh, be able to experience certain events and certain feelings. And when, in the end, you don't get that expectation met, you are filled with just discouragement and um, you're not content about what happens because all of your days are spent in the anticipation phase of the event and so you just pump yourself up to that uh, important date but when stop <laughs> but when it actually happens uh, the expectations are not met and so you're just you're just left feeling disappointed. There's no need to prove your worth. David Hawkins makes it clear to us that if we not let go of pride, we do not have 
self-confidence. When we are in a state of pride, we always need to defend ourselves, defend our ideas, our clothes, how we look. But when we are truly when we truly know our worth, there's no reason for us to defend our choices and to defend who we are to, to, to the world. Pride entails that there is doubt somewhere, that we're not sure about something inside of us. But when somebody questions our worth, we, if we're truly self-confident, we don't even bother to stand up for it and to explain uh, uh, what that person misses the shift from doing to being so take a moment right now and think about the nicest compliment anyone has ever gave to you just what what did they say just take a moment and think about it i know for a fact that it isn't something about what you were doing but about how you were reacting, how you were being in that moment. In my opinion, the the best compliment that anyone could give me is that they just enjoyed my presence in general. Dr. David Hawkins states that people do not seek presence of other people because of what they do, but they seek the feeling that they have when they are with that specific person. As within, so without. I think we all heard this phrase before, but David Hawkins states it in a little different way. He states that all of the stress, all of the anxiety that we have, it's not stemmed from the external stimuli. It's rather because of the all suppressed emotion. A negative thought or a negative emotion just instantly weakens our immune system our muscle tissue so naturally what we believe actually manifests through our body through sickness through anxiety disorders the over attention to our body to our diet has to stop because it leaves us feeling as a victim it's like for example having a pimple on your nose and just feeling that everyone is only looking at your nose and at your pimple whereas in the reality you're so much more than this little spot on your nose he also states that this little tiny little thing is what drains our energy because our thoughts and our energy just focuses on the small little thing hello <gasps> so cute he also suggests that the statement that I am a body is very limiting. Instead, say that I have a body. The body is not experiencing itself at all. It is the mind that experiences the body. We can see scientific reasoning behind it. For example, if we look at anesthesia, uh, we when we are under the drug, the mind is asleep and so the body does not feel anything so all the diseases that humans have are basically mind created so there you have it this is my major aha uh -huh moments of the book called letting go by david hawkins the pathway to surrender i literally recommend this book to anyone this is my favorite book favorite self-improvement book because i just know that it led me personally to major breakthroughs and I hope this this book will do this to you too. Oh. Okay, cut.